Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator news and updates. And today we have some new scenery, which I don't talk about very often, as well as new aircraft that are getting ready to release for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So stick around, play it in the background, whichever is your choice. But listen up. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, so starting off the show today, guys, is we have Flight Sim Studios' first official aircraft under their own name. Now, obviously, many have heard of the developers before and many of the works that they have done with scenery, um, both with Microsoft Flight Simulator's Marketplace and the World Update 6, as well as some of the standalone projects they've worked on before. However, this is the first aircraft they've launched under the name Flight Sim Studio, so don't let that confuse you. However, the C-Ray is going to be a very fantastic addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and truly, I cannot wait for this one. And they've done something that's significantly different than what I've seen yet. Now, it's not a major difference, but they have actually catered their development to both Xbox and desktop editions. Now, the biggest change between the desktop and the Xbox edition is the desktop edition will have the inclusion of the EFB, uh, which will obviously create further expansion and features that are available in the aircraft and customization options that may not be available on the Xbox version of the aircraft. However, the aircraft itself will exist in both. This is going to be a pretty awesome little plane. I am really starting to get a feel for seaplanes. It's really starting to become a calling for me. The more I engage with seaplanes, the more I tend to love them. Um, with my last video being the a Acon A5, um, I really found myself enjoying the sea life a whole lot more than I thought I was really going to. And there was just something different. And then, you know, with, from back with the goose and all those aircraft that are similar of that nature, um, I'm really, really starting to get into seaplanes. Um, and uh, this is a very welcome addition. It's almost got that ultralight feel to it or look to it, I should say. I mean, it's really got that when you really take a look at the light pontoons, uh, very simple configuration here, very large wing, but more like that glider style. So it's obviously an ultralight aircraft with a simple motor on the back of it that allows you to go tear up around an island. Um, I'm really digging the features that are listed here. Um, I love the fact that it's got a very customized uh, electric and fuel system that the reason why those kind of things draw my attention, you know, because I'm not someone who really gets down in the technical details of the aircraft. The reason why I enjoy reading things like custom electrical systems, custom fuel systems, blah, blah, blah is because it shows the devotion of the developer. It shows that the effort and the hours are being dumped into the aircraft to make it as realistic or as that simulation experience as awesome as possible. You know, there it, it, it screams to me that, okay, this isn't just another money grab. This is someone who's really trying to uh, put forth some effort into creating an awesome simulation experience. That's why those kind of lines draw my attention. That's why I very quickly typically buy aircraft when I see things like that is because it shows that there's that there's a, a, a larger intent than just earning a bit of cash. Um, we all know that there's plenty of aircraft um, that are on the market that have been released that were simple crash grabs and very, very lazily done. Um, not mentioning any names, but maybe a certain, you know, uh, military cargo plane with no cockpit comes to mind. Um, but you know, things like that. And so when you see these kind of detail put into it and you see the effort and you see the very specific points that are labeled in the feature list, it really draws my attention to the developer and to the aircraft that they put out. So super excited for this one. I'm definitely going to be jumping all over it as soon as it releases. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Next up on our list here is the Bonanza V35. So it's very similar to the G36, but it has a V-Wing. Now, similar, meaning that basically it's developed by the same company, has a similar, similar uh, aircraft structure. What's the word I'm looking for? Design, if you will, minus the tail, obviously being a major difference. But there were many, many other significant differences between the two aircraft. Now, the aircraft was actually designed by Coronado, but released and sold by Microsoft, meaning that it was designed by Coronado, but you can only buy it on the Microsoft Marketplace. Now, this is part of the... Uh, um, gosh, I can't think of what the name is, the series that they're doing, the famous flyer series uh, that they are doing in regard to the soon to be released uh, major update in the coming October and the what was the 20th anniversary. Um, so 
This aircraft is, I believe it's about $15 US on the Microsoft Marketplace. We would definitely be purchasing this. As you guys know, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, I love the G36. It has a very similar build to it. We've got the V-Wing, although it does have a single piece windshield, which is kind of cool. Gives it that full, um, you know, uh, wide field of view that you get from the cockpit. Um, I love all of the Bonanza products. Uh, Bonanza aircraft are just, there's just something about them that I really, really enjoy. Um, so let me get that up where you guys can actually see something. That would probably be helpful, huh? But uh, this aircraft just screams my name. And I know if I remember correctly, there's actually a an, uh, a freeware add-on that existed that modified the G36 and, and provided a V-Wing um, or a V-Tail, excuse me. But uh, now we don't have to really worry about that given the fact that it's available on the marketplace. And again, it is a Coronado build aircraft. Um, Coronado, you guys tend to have uh, mixed opinions on Coronado, but I love their aircraft. I haven't had any issues with them. Uh, they stick around, they work well. You know, I've never, I think there was an issue when the Mooney first came out uh, that took a minute to get addressed. But for the most part, it, uh, it's been a pretty flawless little plane and I've really enjoyed having it. So Again, about 15 US dollars found on the Microsoft Marketplace designed by Coronado, the uh, V35. Here is a product that is getting a bit of controversy. Um, this is very quickly becoming a product that people either love or they hate. Um, and that is FS Dream Team's GSX Pro. Now, I was given a review copy of GSX Pro uh, beta right before its release. And I got to tell you, I love it so far. Now, I want to make it very, very clear before anybody uh, starts going up in flames. Yes, it requires a lot of work. And yes, there are definitely some issues with that need to be resolved. Um, I tend to be more patient uh, with things like that. Um, it really depends on, again, always what you're looking for, what you're going after, and what your, um, you know, windows of limitations are, right? And what I mean by windows limitations, and this is totally up to each individual person, what are you willing to accept as waiting and what are you not? And that's totally understandable for those who don't want to wait for all bugs and issues to be resolved, who don't want to configure it. Um, it does require a lot of customization. Um, but you know what, if anything, for me, that provides a better selling point because the fact that I'm not just bound to whatever it is out of the box that I can go in and say, you know, I really don't like that this jetway is here or I don't like that this truck goes this direction next to this aircraft. You know, you can change all of that with GCX or GSX, GCX, where the hell did that come from? GSX. Um, and that's one of my bigger keys to it when even back in the um, P3D days. Um, so it, it, it was never that it was a, a software that required zero user intervention. That wasn't what its pull was. It was that it offered a ton of realism features, but yes, it required a bunch of work. Um, you can, again, you can configure the airports individually to have gates in certain positions, to have items in certain positions. Wow. These screenshots are terrible. Um, or you can uh, even customize different layouts for specific aircraft. So it really depends on what you're wanting to do. And if you're willing to put forth the effort, it is a ton of fun to have once you get everything ironed out and working. But it does have its bugs. There are people who are experiencing some crash at desktops. It is 3121, it looks like, on the Euros. Um, so again, it's not the cheapest application out there. But if you are willing to set forth the time and the effort to learn it, step one, configure it step two um, and give it time to obviously you know uh, work through the bugs and, and get through fruition and mature then it's absolutely worth it in my opinion however if that's something that you guys you know you can say no I don't want to deal with it I don't want that kind of headache then I would definitely say stay away from it at least at the current time um, but again everyone's welcome to their own opinions um, I am definitely on board from I'm very grateful to have it um, it's a very awesome application that I definitely thoroughly enjoy, but yes, it does require a lot of work and it's got its headaches. So let's go ahead and move on. So in case anyone have missed the other 2000 YouTubers out there who are just like myself and went up in arms about this, unfortunately, Sim Update 10 has been further delayed. Now, with that being said, I would much rather them delay an update than push something out as we have seen in the past that isn't ready to be pushed out. One of the community's, I think, biggest gripes is we always say, you know, oh, here we go. It's update day. What's going to break, right? So the fact that they are pushing it back and, and uh, giving it time to go through further testing and resolve some of the issues that have come to light, by all means, you know, it was the same thing when PMDG had to push back the 737 release. It sucked. It bummed me out. I was, I've always 
been super excited about the 737, but I completely understand it and respect the decision to do so. So we're now looking for mid-September before we see SIM update 10. However, World Update 11 is currently also slated for SIM or for uh, late September. So we should see quite a few things because with World Update 11, we know that we're getting Canada and we're getting helicopters. Um, now, when I say helicopters, I mean official helicopter support in the simulator. Uh, so that should remove a lot of the, now it's going to be obviously later down the road as aircrafts are going to have to be redeveloped and things like that, but it should remove the need for things like Airland FS. You know, as long as the air, uh, the simulator natively supports the coding that's required for helicopters, it will remove that necessity to have the third party applications, but we'll see what happens. Um, again, sim update 10, obviously, uh, we're expecting, uh, further performance with DirectX 12, which will be a big one if they can iron it out. Um, DirectX 12 is going to be a massive, massive improvement should everything get ironed out and uh, be able to work flawlessly without the hiccups that we currently have. Um, in, in theory, it is going to be a much better API between the graphics card and the simulator and therefore provide better frame rates with l lesser hardware, you know, how all that jazz goes. Uh, we're also going to see better um, terrain and weather radar drawing that are supposed to come with some update 10, which we talked about in a previous video quite a while back when we first got the update for it or the beta for it. Um, I have jumped off of the beta for some update 10. I was running into far too many issues that as a content creator, it just wasn't worth it to me um, to, to deal with the headache at, at, at this stage. Um, but I am super exciting for it. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping that it irons out a lot of the major issues that have been going on for quite some time, but we'll see. I'm not going to draw attention to what my particular issues are just yet that I'm hoping get resolved. I want to see what happens when it drops. That way, you know, hey, less disappointment for you guys, especially if I point something out that you weren't aware of yet. So, um, but uh, we'll see what happens. Again, I actually respect the decision to delay it. I'd much rather it be delayed than pushed out broken. So... We'll just, uh, we'll keep chugging along. We'll keep flying along with what we have and enjoying the sim in, in its current condition. And, and hopefully sim update 10 will come out uh, as planned in mid-September, which would be right around my birthday. So, you know, maybe it'll be a bonus for me. And PMDG has finally given us a hopeful release date of the 737-800 looking to be as early as next week. They're expecting between the 23rd and the 31st of August. Um, so super excited about this one. This is an aircraft that I cannot wait to get my hands on. For those of you who uh, were big X-Plane flyers, the Zebo 737 is a 737-8 or dash 800, excuse me. Don't want to confuse that with the 747. <laughs> so the uh, the Zebo 737 that was so popular in uh, X Plane 11 is a 737-800. So I will definitely be jumping all over this aircraft. I cannot wait to get my hands on this one. Uh, the 600 I wasn't too enthused about. You know, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. BMDG makes wonderful products, but I, I between the 737, the seven or the 600, and 700, the 700 was still fine for me. The 800, there probably isn't going to be near as much uh, difference between the two as I like to think there are between the 7 and the 8, but uh, the 800 is just one of those ones I've made that mental decision that I have to have. Now, we do not yet know when or what the price point of this is going to be, but if they follow suit with the 600, I would hope that it stays along that uh, low price point that they've been aiming at because that is definitely one heck of a deal if they keep that um, in the uh, current routine and the pattern that they have been showing with the 600 and the 700. So, cross our fingers for that because that is a really awesome price point for an amazing aircraft the other thing that we're looking to come we all have heard about the efb that is supposed to be coming to the pmdg series of aircraft now this will not be released with the 737 800 but once again it's looking like my birthday might be a really awesome uh, time frame for microsoft flight simulation uh, because of the EFB will also is planned currently, excuse me, the EFB is planned to be released in the second half of September. You guys can tell I'm tripping over my tongue here. It drives me nuts. I hate it when I have days like this. And there's like no reason for it. Like I'm talking just fine. And all of a sudden, it's like, what happened? Anyway, so we have hopefully next week, but definitely between now and the end of the month, we should expect to see the 737-800. And then on the second half of September, we should be expecting to see the EFB finally reaching the PMDG series of aircraft. Make sure that you guys also come to this page and check out the YouTube video that is posted here showing some of the new features available in the 800. I have left those out of this video intentionally, so that way you guys can go and watch their videos and give them some likes. All right, let's move on to our last piece.
Now, you guys know that, if, again, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, I very rarely do scenery updates. However, um, I saw this one hit the uh, news um, page here on FS Elite, as well as I was reached out to by the developer to do a review or first impressions. I hate saying review. First impressions of this particular airfield, and I'm super excited to do so. Now, I can tell you one of the most amazing parts about this is the incredible detail that has been put into this particular airfield. It takes a lot to get my attention with scenery because my thoughts on scenery is as cool as it is. How much time are you truly spending on the ground? Now, that is not to say that all of that information that or, or all the detail that's put into it is not appreciated. It's just one of those things like how much do you really focus on it? Now, with that being said, at this particular airport, there is a ton of detail put, put into it. And one of the my favorite things about it is, as you guys saw in the beginning of this video, is hangar access. You actually can park your aircraft in a actual hangar and roll it out before your flight. That is super freaking awesome. It's one of those things that I don't see very often. I was sort of shocked to not see more, more frequently uh, than what we do. There is so much detail and so much work put into the development of this airfield. Guys, be on the lookout over the next 24 hours for a very, very detailed uh, impressions video um, here on my channel of this airfield. It is so detailed. There was so much detail work put into it and it all looks so nice that's the thing is it wasn't just like a bunch of random square objects put here oh craig we put a lot of detail in you guys will just have to see it you guys will understand when i finally get that video out like i said be on the lookout between either late tonight or tomorrow it will definitely be out if, if not tonight um where you guys will see this airport truly in action and a whole bunch of cinematic view of it it's just it's an incredible airfield with an incredible amount of work done and um obviously the developer you guys if you guys have purchased if i've had a couple different sceneries from burning blue design and they always do fantastic work but i have to say this is their best one by far um and this was a uh, very popular air airport in england um i did some reading on it once uh, i was asked to do the uh, impressions video on it and it is a heavily used airfield and what's very interesting about it is actually the all the taxiways are asphalt and all the runways are grass um, so I guess that's it's an old uh, Spitfire and or World War II uh, operation base. Um, so that's another cool little tip about it. Um, it'd be a fun place to go. And maybe that's what we'll do is actually bring the Spitfire out and uh, fly it around for a bit and then uh, talk about the airfield. We'll see what happens here. But anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up our uh, video for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed the information that have been brought to you. Um, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, you guys, if you guys want notification of future content, ring the bell. And you guys know the drill above everything else. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next one.